For my academic research, I study the ecology and conservation of rare and endangered plant species. During my almost three decades as a professor, I have had the opportunity to study a wide variety of plant species in many diverse and beautiful places around the world. Today, I would like to share with you some lessons that I learned from Heavenly Father's creations that helped me weather this storm from the traumatic event in my life. As I lifted my eyes unto the hills, I gained a more eternal perspective from the natural world. So the first lesson from nature is grow toward the light. Just as light is essential for life in the natural world, the light of Christ is necessary for our spiritual survival. Examples from the plant world have shown me how to actively grow toward the light of the world. The second lesson I learned from the natural world is remain deeply rooted in living waters. During this traumatic and challenging time in my life, I went on a horse ride in the mountains, and I saw a tree uprooted from a storm. The tree roots were not deep and firm enough to withstand the strong winds. Another symbol of the Savior besides light is living water. As I looked at this uprooted tree, I asked myself, was I deeply rooted and anchored in living waters? The third lesson I learned from nature is find effective ways to tolerate stress. The bristlecone pine falls into a category of species that we call stress tolerators, plants that live with the highest amounts of stress. And bristlecones are the ultimate stress tolerators. Elder L. Tom Perry in October 2008 General Conference suggested, in our search to obtain relief from the stresses of life, may we earnestly seek ways to simplify our lives. We can't predict all the struggles and all the storms that of, in life, not even the ones just around the next corner. But as persons of faith and hope, we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the gospel of Jesus Christ is true and the best is yet to come. The next lesson I learned is that we don't need to know all the answers. Ecologists realize that ecosystems are incredibly complex. The more I study plant communities, the more I realize that we do not fully understand them. I have learned that there is no way to truly comprehend all the complex interrelationships between species and between species and the environment. During this traumatic event, I ask a lot of questions about why. Why did I have to experience my trauma? Why did life have to be so hard? I did not have the answers. Elder Neil L. Anderson in October 2008 General Conference provided insight. He said, when we then remain steady and patient as we progress through mortality, at times the Lord's answer will be, you don't know everything, but you know enough, enough to keep the commandments and do what is right. The fifth lesson I learned was to find refuge and stability in a diverse community. In ecology, we have a theory known as the diversity stability hypothesis. Basically, this theory states that more diverse communities in the number of different plant species they have maintain a more stable ecosystem function over periods of environmental stress, such as drought. Elder Uchtdorf in October 2013 said, brothers and sisters, dear friends, we need your unique talents and perspectives. The diversity of persons and peop per peoples all around the globe is the strength of this church. Final lesson I learned from nature was always remember to thank him. As I spent time in the natural world during my struggle, I asked myself, do I look up in praise of him with the other creations? In DNC 7819 it reads, and he who receiveth all things with thankfulness shall be made glorious, and the things of this earth shall be added unto him, even a hundredfold, yea, more. Do we remember to thank him? Do we look up and say, thank you, Father? My students often ask me how they can be good stewards over the earth. What can they do? There is a quote from Brigham Young that I believe provides the answer to that question. It reads, 
Let me love the world as he loves it, to make it beautiful and glorify the name of my Father in heaven. It does not matter whether I or anybody else owns it. If only we work to beautify and make it glorious, it is all right. I pray that we can love the world as he loves it. I have grown to love his creations even more as I have learned these six important lessons. I know if we can truly love the natural world, we will be good stewards over it. I pray that we take the time from our busy, hectic lives to look up and gain perspective that we need. I know the Savior lives, and if we grow toward his light, remain deeply rooted in his living water, rely on the simple basics of the gospel in times of stress, rely on a diverse community around us, and remember that we don't have to have all the answers, and remember to thank him, we will be able to weather any storm in our lives and will gain that eternal perspective. This Easter season, I want you to know that I love my Savior, the Master Healer, and I am so grateful for the blessing of his atonement. And like the primary song, I am glad that I live in this beautiful world that Heavenly Father created for me. I leave you with this testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.